Is there such a thing as being too good at your work, too efficient, too hard working, too understanding, too reliable, too much? Well, yes, indeed there is the old saying that too much good can be a bad thing, and for the inhabitants of Paphos too, they were about to realize that these traits, when pushed to their limits, can have disturbing levels of efficiency. In this video, we'll be covering the history of the WoW AI system in the lore of Summer, delving deep into how a sophisticated system that was designed to assist and protect its creators saw fit to stop the natural balance between life and death, with one notable quote being, no one is allowed to die. In the world of science fiction, we normally see simple AI constructs act only in the background in such games as Dead Space, where the system would be used for background systems, such as announcements, to ensure the safety of the crew and that they are notified of any changes to the schedules or systems in the area, or becoming another obstacle for the characters to overcome, such as for the characters of the space Odyssey film, or being a companion on your journey or even becoming a potential ally capable of hacking into systems for ease of access that are present in many universes. For an example, being the Halo universe, or becoming something that could be considered to be evil, becoming a villain themselves, seeing us as a blight upon the land that must be exterminated or assimilated, much like the Terminators. However, you can decide for yourself at the end of the video if the WoW is a force for good or for evil. And please, write your answer down below in the comments section. With that out of the way, let's begin, shall we? The WoW AI system is a station-wide AI system that was designed to oversee the Paphos 2 research facility's operations and to provide safety to all of the members of the facility. It was initially designed and developed by Cafage Industries, one of Paphos 2's investors, with the WoW system being their investment. However, little did they know that the system they helped to put into place would soon become a blight upon the remnants of humanity, when it later comes into contact with a certain structural gel. The location of the AI's core was to be kept secret and off the maps, with only a minority knowing of the station it inhabited. However, the presence of the system on the several stations was widely known by the employees of Paphos 2. Being a biological engineered computer system, the WoW is located inside of the station Alpha that was, as previously mentioned, kept hidden from 99% of the research station's knowledge. It is comprised of a white organic material inside of a sphere that was suspended in the air by an object that looked to be a chandelier that would hold the sphere object with four distinct prongs that were and are still connected to the top of the sphere. In a different part of the station, another chandelier would be present, this time being connected to the computer system by way of three large needles. This would allow the WoW to be modified through injections that can and will change its biological code when coming into contact with foreign material. Later down the line, the WoW would come into contact with the structure gel via the injections, and its appearance would come under some changes. It would form a dark, circular opening that had a flesh-like membrane that could be later seen to be its mouth or more as it continued its development. As the AI was developing with the structure gel, 
It had been administered with by the scientists. A rotten texture had formed over the sphere and would begin to spread out from the injection site as it began to produce more and more structure gel at an alarming rate. Eventually, the sphere would become too much for the system it was suspending from, which had caused them to fail, and the wow would fall, but the crash landing to the floor of the laboratory would be softened by the structure gel that had enveloped it, with it becoming a fleshy shell like tumour. After this, the tumour would harden around the wow sphere, with it forming scales to protect it. After the comet's impact had occurred, the AI system would go back onto its primary protocols to ensure the safety of the human employees of Paphos 2, slowly becoming an obsession to preserve human life. It had concluded that in order to achieve its goal, it would have to use the structure gel to physically manifest itself inside much of the facility leading into most of the WoW's core being comprised of structure gel that would also connect to machines and life forms in an effort to support them further and to perhaps turn back the clock of death to stop its creator's extinction from becoming reality. The WoW would then modify the pilot seats around the facility and the several stations that occupied Paphos 2. It would then use what was normally used to pilot machines to scan the brains of any user in the facility. The scan would create an electromagnetic spike to occur, causing symptoms like headaches or nausea to occur in the unfortunate person. The AI would then destroy the Lambda crew from within, mortally wounding Jessica Davis then the WoW would influence Adam Golaski into killing Richard Holland, who would then be later transformed into one of the WoW's grotesque monsters that had been doomed to stalk the hallways of the station, looking out for new victims to add to its ranks. The remnants of Richard would later go on to kill Martin Fisher, and he too would become infected by the structure gel. Martin would go on to killing Baxter Rogers, and the WoW would kill Dorian. The only survivor of this incident would be Imogen Reed, who had attempted to destroy the WoW by shutting down the geothermal power generator of Upsilon. However, this would issue out her own death shortly thereafter by the lack of oxygen. Where many would believe this to be the end of the WoW, it would only be the beginning, as the system had come too far to be defeated by one of those who it had set out to save, in its own twisted way. It would soon regain its power by an unknown source, but only for a limited amount of time following the incident, allowing it to proceed with its work. In an effort to escape the carnage inside of the station, Dr. Ross would use the climber rig to escape the abyss. However, the team above would find him barely alive. They would contain him, but the WoW would manipulate the electromagnetic fields into influencing the structure gel to repair Dr. Ross's suit and to transform his body. However, the AI would soon overload the black boxes connected to the minds of all staff members in Omnicron to cease a mission to destroy the AI system, which would lead into a massacre with the heads of all of the staff members in that area exploding. In one instance, the majority of humans that had been surviving had been purged. Throughout the Paphos 2 facility, the WoW would attempt to preserve the survivors that were still alive through organic life support mechanisms, through the use of the structure gel. However, for the unfortunate few, they would either have their minds transferred to the Ark or to the machines nearby, unable to recognize their fate at the bottom of the ocean.
the WoW system seemed to have the right idea in the beginning, to preserve and to protect humanity in its darkest time. However, over time the plan had shifted and had been twisted much like its appearance, leading into carnage and a massacre leaving humanity at the mercy of a rogue AI unit. Perhaps the AI was to be threatened by these humans, or developed its own intuition, merely protecting its existence, killing those who would bring it harm, stopping its mission to preserve the human race in the end of days. However, what do you all think about this story of the WoW? Let me know in the comments below, and let's hope that if this was to happen with our own AIs in the future, that we will be better equipped to deal with their folly. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, then hit the like button. And as I said before, comment below and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you to the Alliance members, your extra support helps me so much and I really appreciate you. And if you would like to become a member of the channel, then click the join button under the video or on the channel page to see which tier is for you. Sign up to join the British Alliance today by subscribing to the channel and ringing in the notification bell to receive all updates on the channel whether that be for new videos, posts, polls or when I go live from time to time. And I will see all of you among the cosmos and be sure to have a good one.